Welcome to A Guide to Every Deck in EDH. Today we're looking at Ulalek Fused Atrocity, and specifically this is an Eldrazi Tribal deck. So Ulalek is a card that costs 5 hybrid colorless colored mana, so you can either pay with any combination of Wooburg or colorless. It is a 2-5 legendary Eldrazi with Devoid, and whenever you cast an Eldrazi spell you may pay double colorless. If you do, copy all spells you control, then copy all other activated and triggered abilities you control, you may choose new targets for the copies. So basically for Kicker 2, with that 2 being specifically colorless, whenever you cast your stuff, you can copy all the spells and abilities, which is obviously great with the big Eldrazi Titans because you get their triggered abilities twice. But this also applies to many other things and it's going to be a great combo outlet. So first of all, before we even get to the Eldrazi tribal part of the deck, we do have a lot of combos, some of which do involve the Eldrazi creatures. So we've got Basking Brood Scale. This is already a combo piece in Modern, but we can play the same one here. So 2 mana 2-2, two, two, it adapts for 2, and it says whenever 1 or more plus 1 counters are put on it, you may create an 0-1 spawn token with Sack create a colorless mana. That combos with Rosy Cotton of South Lane. When it enters, you create a food token, and whenever you create a token, you put a plus 1 counter on target creature you control. So... With Brood Scale in play, you cast Rosie Cotton, she creates a food, her second ability triggers, you put a plus one counter on the Brood Scale. The Brood Scale triggers, you make a spawn token. Because you made a token, Rosie Cotton triggers, you put a plus one counter on Brood Scale. Brood Scale becomes an infinite power creature and you create infinite spawn tokens. Which means you can one-shot a player who can't block the Brood Scale or just create infinite colorless mana with your spawns. You then have a bunch of other combos, most of which revolve around Ulalek, so remember, Ululak triggers when you cast a spell, when you cast specifically an Eldrazi spell, and you can pay two to copy the spell and all the activated and triggered abilities. So, there's a lot of combos here that involve Echoes of Eternity, which is if a triggered ability of a colorless spell you control or another colorless permanent you control triggers, that ability triggers an additional time. Whenever you cast a colorless spell copy, you may choose new targets for the copy. Kozilex Unsealing, whenever you cast a creature spell with mana value 4, 5, or 6, you create two spawns. And whenever you cast a creature spell with mana value 7+, plus, draw 3. Roaming Throne, which doubles the triggers on all of whatever type you choose, which is obviously going to be Eldrazi. Spawn Gain Commander, when you cast it, create 3 spawns. And 1 and a colorless sack and Eldrazi deal 2 to any target. Stronic Resonator, 2 tap copy target triggered ability you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. And Writhing Chrysalis, when you cast this spell, create 2 O1 one spawns. Reach, whenever you sacrifice another Eldrazi, put a plus one counter on Writhing Chrysalis. So, this gets very complicated. A lot of these are three card combos, so bear with me. With Ulalek, Echoes of Eternity, and Spawn Gang Commander, you cast the Spawn Gang. Because you have Echoes, Ulalek triggers twice, and Spawn Gang triggers. You resolve the Echo Trigger, you copy the Spawn Gang, you resolve the copy of Spawn Gang, you resolve one of the spawn gang triggers, creating three spawn tokens. You activate two of the spawn tokens, adding double colorless. You resolve Ulalek's trigger, paying two colorless to copy it. This copies the spawn gang that you still have on the stack and its trigger and Ulalek's trigger. Then you just repeat that process over and over. You gain infinite colorless mana and infinite spawn tokens. And then you can sack all the spawn tokens to the spawn gang commander to infinitely deal damage to all of your opponents. Or you can do the same thing, but instead of Echoes of Eternity, you've got Stryonic Resonator. So in this case, you cast the spawn gang, Ulalek and the spawn gang trigger, you hold priority, and you activate Stryonic Resonator by paying two and tapping it, and you copy Ulalek's trigger. You resolve the Ulalek's trigger, paying double colorless, you copy the spawn gang, the Ulalek trigger and the Spawn Gang trigger. You resolve the copy of Spawn Gang's trigger. You resolve, or rather, the copy of Spawn Gang and its trigger. You create three spawns. Then you activate two of the spawns to sack for two colorless. You resolve the copy of Ulalek's trigger from the previous step, which causes you to pay double colorless, which you have, which copies the Spawn Gang spell, Ulalek's trigger, and Spawn Gang's trigger. Repeat. You generate infinite spawns, which give you infinite colorless mana and then sack them all to Spawn Gang Commander, dealing infinite damage. Or, Ulalek plus Echoes plus Writhing Chrysalis. You cast the Chrysalis, Ulalek and the Chrysalis trigger twice. You resolve the Chrysalis trigger, you create two spawns. You activate the spawns to get two colorless. You resolve the Echo trigger to create a copy of the Writhing Chrysalis spell. You resolve one of the Ulalek triggers, paying the two colorless that you have. 
you get another Ululek trigger and Writhing Chrysalis trigger. Resolve the Writhing Chrysalis copy. Resolve the copy of the trigger, creating two more spawns. Activate the spawns. Create double colorless. Each Writhing Chrysalis you control triggers twice. You put two plus one counters on each of them. You resolve the copy of Ululek's trigger from the previous step. You have to pay two. You have the two to pay, so you copy the Chrysalis spell, Ulek trigger, and the Chrysalis trigger. Repeat, you wind up with infinite plus one counters on an infinite number of creature tokens. You have infinite copies of all of your abilities. You have infinite creature tokens, and you have infinite death, ETB, leave the battlefield, and sack triggers, if those are relevant for anything else. So it doesn't win the game on the spot, but you do have infinite creatures that are all infinitely big, and that should be probably enough to win the game. And similar to how Spawn Gang could also be copied with Stranic Resonator instead of Echoes, this combo can also be executed with the Resonator instead of the Echoes. Then there is a four card combo. You have Ululek plus Resonator plus Unsealing. And then you need any Eldrazi creature that costs four, five, or six so that you can get the Create Two Scions, the uh, Two Spawn Creature Token part of this. So this one effectively works the same way as the Spawn Gang or Writhing Chrysalis triggers. You just are using the Kozilex Unsealing to generate the spawns instead of Chrysalis or Spawn Gang to generate the spawns. But you just need any other Eldrazi of that type and you follow the same steps. And then similarly, you can use Resonator or Echoes for that combo. Either way, it works. Now, of course, you have additional combos. So if the Eldrazi that you have costs seven or more, you can use the Unsealing to draw your whole deck. And then any of these combos can change based on whether you have Roaming Thrown to double the triggers. So you may be able to get infinite mana or tokens where you wouldn't otherwise get them out of any of those combos. Now, lastly, we have Eldrazi Displacer. And the awkwardness about the Displacer is that it's blinking creatures, most of which are having cast triggers. So this doesn't work with any of them. But what it does work with is Eyeless Watcher. So Eyeless Watcher is when it enters, not cast, you create two Scions. Now, obviously, this costs three to activate. This only makes two. So what you need is any effect that will double the blink or increase the amount of mana that the scions create. So if you have any card that increases the amount of mana that the scions create, you can create four instead of three, and then you can use that to generate infinite mana. If you've got anything that increases the amount of tokens that are generated when Eyeless enters to at least two more, then you get infinite mana and tokens. And if you've got any effect that reduces the cost of Eldrazi Displacer. So anything like Training Grounds, Forsaken Monument, like any of that stuff will allow you to go infinite with this combo here. But it is a combo that is its own isolated thing and doesn't work with any of the other permutations involving Ululek. So to get back to the Eldrazi tribal part of the deck, we obviously have lots of Eldrazi and we've got lots of payoffs for the various things that we're doing. So we've got Decimator of the Provinces, this is going to be the Eldrazi version of Crater Hoof Behemoth. It's not as good, but it is an Eldrazi. And because it is a cast trigger thing, we can copy it with Ululek. It also does have Emerge, so we can potentially cast this for a lot cheaper than we could cast Crater Hoof. Then we've got Emrakul the Promised End, Ulamog the Defiler, and all three of the current Kozilek versions. There's also Harragast Erupting Nullkite, which is when you cast it, you may exile your hand if you do draw three cards. This is one of the few triggers that it doesn't matter if we copy it with Ululek because we have to discard our hand anyway. And each creature spell you cast has Emerge. The Emerge cost is equal to its mana cost. So we can cast this for its Emerge for on the cheap and then Emerge other stuff on the cheap. There's also Sire of Stagnation. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, that player exiles the top two cards of their library and you draw a card. This is essentially the Eldrazi version of Consecrated Sphinx. Again, not as good, but it's also a six mana blue creature that you draw two cards whenever your opponents take a fairly reasonable and regular action. And then just the regular old draw spells, one ring, Rhystic Study. For cheating stuff into play, we've got Cryptic Gateway. Tap two untapped creatures you control. You may put a creature card from your hand that shares a creature type with each creature tapped this way onto the battlefield. Now, obviously, you're cheating the creatures directly onto the battlefield and not casting them, so this won't work with anything involving cast triggers. But if you're just looking to get stuff onto the battlefield in the first place, or you're looking to cheat like your giant Eldrazi in, this can be a way to do that. There's also Descendant's Fury. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, you may sack one of them. If you do, you reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card that shares a type with the sacrificed creature, put it onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom. So again, just like Cryptic Gateway, it's cheating them directly into play. You're not casting them, but these are the only 
tribal versions of cheating stuff into play that you can run. We then have a fair number of counter spells, as usual, a bunch of lands, pretty straightforward. The only real difference here is that rather than running the battle bond lands that are, they enter untapped when you have multiple opponents, we are running the pain lands because we do want to ensure that at least some of our lands are able to tap for colorless. So we have things like Ancient Tomb, but there's not really too many other lands that can both tap for colorless and colored mana. So in this case, we're running the pain lands like Llanowar Wastes and Underground River and Yavamaya Coast. A little bit of protection, some ramp spells, specifically included in here, some differences from the usual ones are Kozilek's Channeler and Urza's Incubator. It's also worth noting that, for example, Delighted Halfling can tap for colorless. We've got some removal, which includes Ulamog the Ceaseless Hunger, Thief of Existence, and Devourer of Destiny. We also have Void Winnower as another big payoff. Sweepers, Dranith, the usual tutors, along with Worldly to go get creatures. And then there's obviously many more things you could play. I opted not to play Emrakul the World anew. I didn't feel like it was really that good, and we had plenty of other stuff to do anyway. But there's obviously many Eldrazi creatures that I did not run in the deck that you could run. But with all that said, that is going to be Ululek the Fused Atrocity, and specifically an Eldrazi Tribal deck for EDH.